Um, this segment, we're actually going to talk about the year 2014. And this year um, was actually a pretty fantastic year when it comes right down to it for Brickade Books. We released a lot of uh, middle grade this year. So Trolls and Melic Stones um, and Tamara Tinker, which really is a middle grade. I don't know why I said that, but it is. Um, but I wanted to talk to um, Bill first because Bill it has been, basically Bill has been with us the longest. And Bill's been pretty much through every iteration of everything that I've ever done. And, uh, and so I wanted to ask him a little bit about said beauty of the blues and where the poems came from for that book. Yes. What do you want to ask me, Bob? <laughs> Billy, you chimed in too early. So we have to talk about, talk about where the poems for that book came from. From my mind. <laughs> they, uh, well, at, at that point, I, I, I had stopped slamming. I used to slam. I was one of those slam poets, you know, I was loud. It was in your, it was in your face. I was loud and in your face. And I decided to be uh, not so loud uh, and, and uh, not so in your face anymore because I got just tired of looking at people's faces. So, so <laughs> you think I'm you think I'm kidding? <laughs> No, so so uh, I just uh, I decided to shift gears, you know. I decided to downshift, and uh, you know, just be a little more introspective and, and a little less, uh, you know. What was that? A little less, uh, yeah, you know. All right. And and uh, and everybody was always used to bug me about Bill. When are you going to do a chat book, Bill? When are you going to do a chat book, Bill? You should write a chat book. So then it was like, you know what? Uh, I did the chat books. Now it's, it's time to do a, a you know a regular, regular book. And then I said one day to Bob, "Hey Bob, you want you want to do a book?" And he said, "Yeah." And it's okay. Now I've got a purpose in life. And the rest is history. How many? How so, many books? Wait, wait. I gotta know how many books do you have out now, Bill? Uh, right now I've got, uh, well, there's number six is, is being, uh, tinkered with right now. It's, it's in okay. the, uh, it's in the, uh, polishing buffing stages. So that's not bad what, since your first one came out in what, 2014, right? Yeah. I, I could do a book a year, but the, the, the publishing world can't keep up with me. America can't keep up with you. I, yeah, that's it. It's Marka. I that's can't why, even keep up with me. That's why we had to spread a global pandemic because we had that's to slow America down. <laughs> they could catch up on your books. Yeah. The Canadians love you though. Um, so, so this way, but it, 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 when, when I first started doing poetry, uh, my beard was like reddish brown. Maybe let's compare beards. All right, let me, let me pivot real quick because I want to I want to give uh, Gen Z a chance to talk a little bit about um, Gen Z does not have a beard. Just for the people, you're, don't adjust your screen. She does not have a beard. No, I don't think Jen has a beard. Um, but I did want to give her a chance to talk about you know kind of the the background behind trolls, where trolls came from. Uh, you know, most of the authors are people that I have known or you know interacted with for decades, right? I think you know. All of us go back at least you know 15 if not 20 or more years. Jen was the first author that kind of came in as a newbie and so you know this was the first book that we released that you know, wasn't Bill Campana and it wasn't Sharon and it wasn't Joe. So I kind of want to give her a chance to talk about a little bit about where that book came from. So Jen the floor is yours. Well my internet is super spotty so I hope you can hear me anyway. But uh, Trolls was a book that I wrote when my son was very young and just through kind of observing all the weird stuff that kids do, I said, well, gee, they're kind of in their own little world and what would happen if they had their own little world? And that's, I don't know, it's kids fantasy fiction. It's just fun. It's just silly. I'm very bad at talking about myself. 
<laughs> so um, in addition to in addition to trolls, we also released uh, the Melik Stones, which was kind of another sort of middle grade adventure type book um, from Sharon. And so they kind of they kind of went hand in hand a little bit in terms of the fact that we were able to go around for the events that we did and talk about the fact that we had these two great stories that kind of worked together. So um, Sharon, talk a little bit about Melik Stones. Uh, you know, what's interesting is that both of those books are considered portal fantasies. Um, so there's an entry fantasies. into another world from the contemporary world. And it, it wasn't planned that way. It just worked out that we had two middle grade portal fantasies that came out the same, uh, the same year. The Nellick Stones is the story of two kids who bump into each other at Papago Park and end up in a land where dragons rule, fairies carry swords, and they have to find two, uh, five magic stones in order to get home. And the dragons are also looking for the stones. Uh, so it, it becomes quite an, uh, a bit of a race to find the, the talismans. And there's a lot of adventure. And I had a lot of fun writing it. Now, that was my first novel. And the first uh, iterations of that novel were horrible, uh, uh, unstructured. They weren't well done. It took me years to figure out how to fix it, but I knew I had a story there. I really knew that the Nellick Stones had, there was something there that needed to be a book. And so, I mean, it poured out of me in eight weeks when I wrote the first draft. And there were scenes in that book where I got so excited writing them that I got up from the computer and was bouncing around the room because things were so exciting. And, you know, I think that there's a, there's a saying that no tears in the writer, no tears in the reader. And I think it holds true for the fun and the excitement as well. And, and I think that that comes through and I think it comes through in both of those books. So uh, Jen, are there more stories for Emily at any point do you think? Or? I have no idea. We'll find out. I've written a few little short pieces that didn't make it into the a novel, but I don't know. I've been working on a lot of other stuff too, so we'll see. Okay, all right. So um, back to the poetry side, because poetry, it was a very busy poetry year, and, and um, Scott unfortunately couldn't be with us uh, for this, but We Over Here Now came out this year. Uh, and of course, we just talked to Bill. Bill, Bill's first poetry book with us came out this year. I mean, it was a strong year in terms of sort of reiterating our, our sort of poetry cred, if you will. So, um, Bill, what do, you, what do you like about the idea of being published with a press? Like, what? what do you, like? you look like a park ranger, by the way. I can't hear you. Oh, I said, you look like a park ranger. Howdy, Mr. Ranger, sir. <laughs> I'm waiting for Boo Boo. Just wait hey, for Boo Boo, let's get us a picnic basket. No, so what's, um, what do you like about, what do you like about being um, published with the press? What do I like about it? Yeah, you mean, do you like these guys? Do you like, I mean, do you like hanging out with Clue? What, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like everything. I'm in love with life, Bob. You know that. I wake up in the morning. I I, I get out of bed and I I dance around, like like uh, Gene Kelly, and I, I sing in the rain, and then I go write depressing, dark poetry. <laughs> Bill, I, Bill, talk about where the the cover of that book came from, because I I love the cover on that book, and it, it's my old high school journal. It had a, a strip of duct tape on the on the 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 left side of the, uh, the 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 edge. It was one of those books where it had like these spikes that came up, so you you punch holes in the paper and put it down, and then and then fold them over. This is is probably from the fifties. I think it was a, a some kind of folder that my my older brother took from my father. So. Uh, then I took it from him because he had no use for it anyway. I don't know why he had it ever. That he didn't. He didn't do anything like homework or anything when he was in school. So I. I it was my uh, old high school journal, and uh, and one day uh, I thought, you know what, uh, the the front cover had torn. It just like ripped in half, but the back 
would be, that was the end of my high school journal. And then it became the first front cover of uh, my first real book. So sort of a continuation of uh, what I wanted to be and could never realize when I was, uh, you know, 17, because, you know, my brain was mush. It was mush. Utter mush. It was total, it was like a bowl of a, uh, not even steel cut oatmeal. It was, it was like a plastic cut oatmeal. All right. Well, well on that overnight, it's over. So, so when you when you look at that book, you see that that duct tape, that that's like uh, vintage duct tape. That that is very old, and it's it's all uh, crinkly from from time, you know, from just uh, you know wearing yeah, out. The actual scan of the of the actual duct. Right, right. So if you look at like current duct tape, is real smooth. You know. So. There you go. Um, on that note, I think we've reached a point where uh, Jen wants to do another giveaway. I was just going to say, Bob, um, can we give away a book with some vintage duct tape on it so people can really experience that feel and that love of the vintage? Yes, you know? we can. Let's give away a said beauty to the blues. So this, this lucky winner will not just get the book. They will not just get Bill's poems about you know waking up and dancing, but they will get vintage duct tape. Where are, you, where are we going to get vintage duct tape, Jeff? It's on the it's on the cover of the book. They get the memory and the experience. Oh, okay. All right. I'm going to go with you on that. Okay. Um, I let's do... like real vintage duct tape. I think it's virtual. Yeah. Okay, here it is. Like we are. Yeah. yeah. It's like a reproduction. It's an official reproduction of vintage duct tape. Let's give it to Seth Wilson. I'm looking at Seth Wilson. No, I don't want him to have it. Give it to somebody else. <laughs> Anybody else. And I think we just I think we just moved Bill back to. <laughs> so congratulations to Seth. Um, you are the uh, recipient of a signed copy of Said Beauty to the Blues. And with that, wow, we are like we are like right back on time. Look at us. <laughs>